Okay, in today's video, I'm gonna go over a brief explanation of free fall, which we might also call one-dimensional vertical motion and talk a little bit about something we need to keep in mind when we're doing these problems and how it's different from one-dimensional horizontal motion. And then we'll do an example at the end of the video. Okay, free fall. I would say there are two different kinds of free fall, two different ways we think about free fall. One is when something falls straight down. That's one kind of free fall. You drop something, something falls just straight down. The other kind of free fall is when you project something straight up and then it comes back straight down. So there's two things, drop something straight down or shoot something or project something straight up and it comes straight down. In both cases, there's no change in position in the X direction. There's only motion in the Y direction. In both cases, when we talk about free fall, we all often we say there's no air resistance. That's generally what we mean by free fall. There's no air resistance, so we can ignore air resistance. Also, because it's free fall and we're on Earth, the acceleration, which in this case, because it's the acceleration due to gravity, we abbreviate it with a G, is 9.81 meters per second squared. When you drop something and there's no air resistance, it has an acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. That's when you're on Earth and near Earth's surface. Other places in the solar system, other places, the acceleration due to gravity is different. Like on the moon, I believe it's one-sixth of that, which I think is 1.61 and 1.62 meters per second squared. But on Earth, it's a constant 9.81 meters per second squared, sometimes approximated as 10. Now, in both cases, whether it's 9.81 or 10, the object is falling down and the acceleration is pulling it down. It's accelerating. I shouldn't say the acceleration is pulling it down. The acceleration is in the negative direction, or it is accelerating in the negative direction. So therefore, we say it's negative 9.81. When you do free fall problems, when you do kinematic problems, you always want to be consistent with your signs and use your signs minus 9.81 meters per second. Now, as I said, there's two kinds of problems. One is when something drops straight down. When you drop something straight down, the initial velocity, because you're holding it in your hand or it's being held, is zero meters per second. And it won't often say that in the problem explicitly. It'll just say, Johnny dropped something, and you have to remember the initial velocity in that case is zero meters per second, and you know that. Okay, when you throw something straight up, the final velocity, when it gets to the top of its path, before it starts returning back down, the final velocity is zero meters per second. If you remember that, that'll help you simplify some of your equations, okay? Also, so that's the velocity at the top. Also, when you throw something straight up, or you project something straight up, let's say, for example, it leaves your hand with a speed of five meters per second, or it leaves the thing that's projecting it five meters per second. When it's moving up, up is in the positive direction. Let's so call that five meters per second. Excuse me, positive five meters per second is the velocity. Well, when it comes back down to your hand or it comes back down to the same place from which it was projected, the speed is going to be the same. It'll have the same speed, five meters per second, five meters per second. But now it's traveling the negative direction, so the velocity is going to be negative five meters per second. All right. Now, also, when you project something straight up, the time it takes for it to get to the top of its path will be equal to the time it takes for it to come back down. Okay, these are some things you need to keep in mind that will help simplify some of the problems, help you have a better conceptual understanding. And we'll do an example right now, and we'll use some of this, and I'll put some links at the end of this video for some additional problems to practice free fall. Okay, Richard, this is the first problem. It's mad at sister, so he takes her iPhone, drops it out the window. The bedroom window is 8.75 meters above the ground. We want to know the time it takes for the iPhone to reach the ground. Now, for free fall motions, I think the best thing to do, the first thing I always do, is I like to draw a picture. So I draw a very simple sketch. Horizontal motion, I don't know, I usually don't draw a picture. Free fall motion, I do. So I have this place where it's being dropped from. Here's where it's being dropped. Here's the ground surface. I draw the object. I just draw a circle or a square. I'm not going to draw richer than his iPhone. It takes too long. And I mark down that it's 8.75 meters. This distance is 8.75 meters. Now, you want to keep in mind, you don't always have to draw an XY coordinate system, but you want to keep in mind that where the thing starts, we generally designate as zero. So this is going to fall downward. It means a change in position is going to be negative 8.75. The distance is 8.75, but the change in position because position is a vector, 
is uh, our change in position as a vector is negative 8.75. So we drew our picture, we set it up. The second thing we do is we write down all five of the variables that are included in the kinematic equation, initial velocity, final velocity, change in position. So this is free fall, so I put delta y as opposed to delta x. Doesn't really matter, of course, but we're talking about y motion, motion in the y direction. Acceleration, I didn't leave that as a, I don't put a g. Could I put a g? And then the time. What do we know? Well, we're given that the distance is 8.75. We need to remember that this is actually the change in position, so it has to be minus 8.75 meters per second. Not meters per second, meters. Okay, the next thing we know is it's dropped, and that means the initial velocity is zero, as we said in the previous slide. We're given also the acceleration. Now, you're not actually given it, but you know it is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. It doesn't actually say that in the problem. That's another thing. This, the initial velocity, and the acceleration are not given in the problem. But you need to recognize that you know the initial velocity and you know the acceleration when you have something dropped. All right, we want to find the time, and we're not given the final velocity, and we're not going to find the final velocity. All right, so that's basically how we set it up. Now I'm going to take all this with us to the next slide. We're going to get out our kinematic equation. We need to figure out which of the kinematic equations we're going to use. Now, you'll notice we're looking for time. And if you had some experience now with the kinematic equations, you'll notice this equation doesn't have time in it, so we can't solve for the time. Now, the other three equations all have time, time, and time in them. But in order to use one of these equations, we have to know the other three variables. Once again, you're given three variables. You're given three of the variables. You're solving for the fourth. Each equation has three, four variables in it. If you're given three of those four, then you can solve for the fourth. Okay, so that means the first equation has the time in it, so we're going to solve for the time. Except we don't know the final velocity. The final velocity in this, we don't know the final velocity. Therefore, we don't know all three of the other variables. We don't know the final velocity. The second equation also has time, but also has final velocity. We can't use that equation. This equation right here, we're we're looking for the time it has the time in it. We know the other three variables. We know the change in position, minus 8.75. We know the initial velocity is zero, and we know the acceleration is minus 9.8. So we're going to take this slide with our diagram and the equation and the information we're given, and we're going to use this equation to solve this problem. Okay, now another thing you should recognize, which will simplify this equation, is the initial velocity is zero. And this term right here is initial velocity times the time. Well, the initial velocity is zero, the initial velocity times the time is zero, and therefore this equation simplifies to the change in position is equal to 1 half at squared. And this is kind of an important equation for free fall because the distance that something falls is equal to 1 half times the acceleration times the time squared. And the acceleration is a constant, so it's just, you just mostly depends on the time. All right, now we're solving for the time, so we're going to rearrange this equation, solve for time, which means we're going to have to multiply both sides by 2, take the square root of both sides, and we get that the time is equal to 2 times the change in position, 2 times delta y divided by the acceleration. Now we simply plug the values in, 2 times minus 8.75 meters divided by the acceleration, and take the square root of that. Now you'll notice, I just want to point out, because the signs, you can't take the square root of a negative number, but you'll notice we have a negative on the top and a negative on the bottom. That's going to be a positive. If you leave one of the negative off, you'll have the right number under here, but it'll have the wrong sign. And you try to take the square root of a negative number, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So therefore, in this case, when we do all of this, we have our time, we have our signs all figured out. You get that the time it takes this object to fall or the iPhone to fall 8.75 meters is 1.34 seconds, okay? So there you go. At the beginning, we talked about the things we need to take into consideration and keep in mind when we're doing free fall problems. There's two kinds. You throw something straight up and it comes straight back down, or you drop something. In both cases, there's no motion in the x direction. We did an example. We drew a simple diagram, and we wrote down all five of the variables. We filled in what we knew and what we didn't know. We knew three. We wanted to find a fourth. We chose the right equation. We simplified it. We rearranged it for the uh, variable we're solving for. We plugged the values in. Get the answer with the correct units, and there you go. Okay? 
keep those things in mind. I don't think it's that complicated. It's basically the same thing as one-dimensional horizontal motion. Thank you very much for watching. I'll put some links to some further practice problems here. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can do all of the following three things. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice comment in the comment section. And therefore, subscribe to my channel and get all of my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Thank you very much.